Okay, so today is um, June the 13th of 2021, and this is the Bible study component. This is the Bible study um, component for the for the um, topic Jehovah Sabaoth. So we've been doing a, a series, as we know, Father, Son, and Spirit, and uh, we are looking at Father, Son, and Spirit individually. We've been looking at God the Father, trying to get God to know God the Father um, through His names, because His names reveal who He is, His attributes, how He is, and how He is, through His covenant, going to interact with us. This is a covenant. It's like a signed and sealed guarantee um th his covenant name is jehovah or yahweh depending on it was translated uh from the hebrew and so it's um when you say either jehovah or yahweh we're talking about his covenant name and so right now we're talking about jehovah Sabaoth, and jehovah Sabaoth means lord of hosts so um the bible um teaching component we uh, I taught on that and so it was real you know <laughs> excuse me in depth um, so this is the Bible study part Jehovah Sabaoth is Lord of hosts or Lord of armies he's the leader of and master over his heavenly armies not just one army of angels but multiple armies of angels the Bible doesn't say how many is in a host so we don't know. We know one host is an immense number, but m multiple hosts. I, I don't. I don't know how many is um, in a host. If the Bible does say how many is in a host, or if that's known, I'm not. I mean, you know, how many hosts of angels? I don't know, but I. I but I know it's multiple um, hosts, and so we are. The heavenly hosts protect the kingdom of heaven and the citizens of the kingdom. We as children of God are citizens of the kingdom of God. The scripture that we read uh, for the scripture for this entire series, the series focus scripture, is 1 John 5, 7 to 8. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The series forethought. Or what do what when this series uh, came about? What is it that we are thinking that we're going to gain from this series? So, God is a triune being, body. He is a triune being, Father, Son, Spirit. He made us in His image and likeness, body, soul, spirit. As we learn about the triune nature of God, we will learn about the triune nature of man, and in doing so, we'll gain a more effective and fulfilling walk of faith. The scripture that I went over for the Bible teaching component is 1 Samuel 1, 1 to 20. And then the Bible study participants uh, also read Psalm 84. So some points I want to further pull out from the, uh, from the teaching video, from the uh, Bible teaching component. God has a host of battle angels. And I just kind of went over that. So I'm not going to um, go over that again. But that was one of the points I wanted to pull out. The next point, the angels protect God's domain in heaven. The kingdom, the kingdom of light in the earthly realm and God's children. So God has his angels to help us. There was a, um, a story in the Bible about um, Daniel. He had prayed to God and there was a situation where there was difficulty and when the angel showed up the messenger one of the angels um they um showed up and he explained to daniel from the day that you prayed your prayer was answered but he explained that there was a battle going on in the heavenly realm and that um the dark dark forces or dark angels were trying to stop the answer from coming through that's an example of a battle in the heavenlies so there are things going on when God is trying to get our help to us trying to answer um, our prayers sometimes there's actually heavenly resistance going on 
we can't see what all of what's going on but sometimes there is actually there are battles that are going on and then um the next point i read the story about um about samuel's mother hannah so the story revolved around her husband elkanah and he had two wives hannah and penina and so elkanah um He, instead of holding on to God's perfect plan, God showed us what he wanted in this earth in the beginning. It said he did everything in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. What he did in those six days will accurately tell you what God approves of, what he wants in this earth, how we are to function as people. If you really read that account in the Bible, it will give you information as to what is God's plan, what was his intentions when he made man. So Elkanah abandoned God's perfect plan of one wife for one husband, and it led to strife. He, um, he, and heartache. So the um, Penina, one of the wives, became an adversary. The Bible described her as an adversary which is extremely strong word. That's a very serious word. An adversary is one of the names of Satan. And so Hannah had to seek the Lord of hosts to help her in that situation. And so any situation that we are dealing with, if anything is trying to block our, our um, ability to grab hold to the promises of God, the things that Jesus shed his blood for us to have um, and attain, those covenant promises, anything that tries to come against the covenant in any way, God considers it an adversary because his name, his seal, is his, his name is his guarantee. And so if something is trying to stop the guarantee from manifesting, the heavenly host will get involved. Jehovah Sabaoth will fight on our behalf. And then the next point, um, which I kind of just said when I was just explaining um, the other point, an adversary is any person, place, or thing, anything, any entity, anything, any system, any construct, anything um, that comes to prevent, hinder, delay, or reverse God's will for manifesting in the life of his children. That's when we can specifically call on Jehovah Sabaoth because he is serious about his plan for our lives. He, Jesus shed his blood so that we could receive the promises um, that are in the covenant of God. So God wants us to have the promises. Anything that tries to hinder it or stop it or prevent it or to reverse it, the heavenly hosts will get involved. Jehovah Sabaoth will fight um, on our behalf. And then, next point, the way that a person feels and matters, the way that a person feels matters. The feelings that a person has. Some people can try to make another person feel like, they're, like their feelings are irrelevant or like their feelings are somehow invalid but it's valid just because of the fact that it's there if a person is feeling something it is a valid emotion and so other people should not try to trivialize um, another pe person's feelings or response um, now maybe their response is out of proportion to what is going on but it still matters. And so that's something that, you know, the person can be talked to or prayer can happen or whatever type of intercession needs to happen. But it does need to be to to be validated because what we feel is part of who we are. It's part of our soul. Our emotions are coming out from our soul. And so if we are invalidating how somebody feels, we are actually invalidating their soul. We're saying... Your soul doesn't matter.
but we know that it does our soul matters and so what a person feels does matter and in this um, verse that I read the scripture Elkanah when um, he saw his wife Hannah in such distress crying and going through all types of emotions that showed her her countenance was very low and and very she was very distressed and he started explaining to her but I'm so good to you you have all of these wonderful things in your life look at how privileged you are I'm even better to you than 10 sons why cheer he was telling her basically cheer up stop acting like that but her feelings were important and they mattered and it showed that they mattered because Jehovah Sabaoth got involved and um, he got involved with the situation to help Hannah. And then the next point, um, the Lord of hosts will confront and eliminate the adversary. So that, that's what he'll do. He'll confront and eliminate the adversary or, or the thing that the adversary is using against us. So Penina was using against Hannah uh, the fact that she couldn't have children. And in that society, that was a very big deal. It was a very big deal. And Penina, her adversary, that's the thing that she had been using as a weapon to continue to vex Hannah. So God eliminated her ability to do that. He gave Hannah the son she had been praying for the child she had been praying for. He blessed her life. And so that's what the Jehovah Sabaoth does. That's how he interacts with us. And God wants us to know that through his name, Jehovah Sabaoth, that he will fight on our behalf any type of adversary that shows up in any form. Person, place, thing, system, entity, doesn't matter what it is. If it's, if it's trying to um, interfere with God's covenant blessings, covenant promises, Jehovah Sabaoth will show up and fight on our behalf. And so now I want to go to the scripture. So um, it's Psalm 84. And um, I think, Anik, you read this week? Yeah, one second. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Psalm 84. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found and forth and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, and whose heart are the ways of them. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pool. They go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion death before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in thee. Amen. Thank you for reading that. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And so um, I want to just go back over, over this. So Psalm 84. Um, so this is a psalm that was written by, it wasn't written by, <coughs> excuse me, King, excuse me, King David. It was written by the sons of Korah. If you remember, we've read before, uh, we mentioned the sons of Korah before. Um, they were, um, at the time um, 
of Moses in the wilderness, the sons of Korah, not these ones, but um, in that line, they rose up against Moses because some of the people that he led out of the um, that he led out of Egypt, they rose up against him. They became they were community members that were in high regard, and they started feeling like they they didn't need Moses to tell to lead them anymore. They wanted to rise up. And they even started accusing Moses um, that he was trying to just lord it basically over them. And um, they, they were very, um, it, it was a very bad, a very serious situation. And they felt like they had the right to go before uh, God themselves. Remember, God talked to Mo, um, Moses face to face. And these uh, men started feeling like they could interact with God. They didn't need to go through Moses um, and and uh, so what happened they actually the ground this is the story when the ground opened up and swallowed the family their children their possessions all of them because they were confronting Moses and 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 saying you know that you know they were ignoring God's order basically they were confronting Moses, but who they really were going against was God. The ground opened up and swallowed them. And then 250 of the people that were in agreement with it, they were consumed. They were trying to offer an offering incense. And what happened, it turned into, um, they ended up being consumed by the fire. And so that's, we talked about that before, but that's just, I just wanted to give that background because that's who wrote this. And so verse verse 1, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. So, um, at the time, remember, Jesus hadn't yet, um, he hadn't yet been crucified. He hadn't yet died, um, been buried and resurrected. So he didn't yet live in man. The tabernacle was not yet man. They actually had to go to a physical tabernacle. And so here he's saying how amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. Look at the appreciation right there, first of all, for the tabernacles. He knew that the tabernacles were a special place, unlike any other. Because there, that's where he could meet with God. In his presence. Verse 2. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. This this person um, knew. The, the writer of this psalm knew how precious God is. Today, a lot of times people take for granted who God is. And we don't really even know him a lot of times who he is he becomes like catchphrases like a catchphrase or, or something that people say from time to time God boils down to church activities uh, oh I'm an usher oh, I'm, I'm on the deacons board I'm this or that and he comes down to activities he comes down to this is how this is church as usual we go to church we sing we get emotional we jump around we do all these things and it becomes the doings of of um of a, a system basically a church system and that's what it boils down to and and a lot of times people leave out god they leave out really getting to know him to really usher in his presence and it just becomes a lot for show not every church of course but too often we don't recognize the grandness of who this is this is the creator of the universe and we miss it but this writer of this psalm did not miss it and verse 3 yea the sparrow hath found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young even even thine altars O lord of hosts my king and my and my god so he was just talking about you know that he would see the birds sometimes even go and um, make a nest. I guess I don't. I don't know what type of structure it was actually at this time. I don't know if it was a 
um, a, um, a permanent structure or if it was, you know, I'm not sure what type of uh, situation it was where the tabernacle was, but whatever it was, even the birds found rest there. He was saying he noticed he noticed that the birds went there as well. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. So this is talking about the heart of somebody who really gets to know God. When you really get to know God, you will still be praising thee. Because it becomes just like your breath, just like your breathing. It becomes a constant thing. Because you realize it's not about an activity. It's about your heart's position. You have a heart that is praising. A constant state of praise towards the Lord. And then um, then the next verse. 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. In whose heart are the ways of them. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee in whose heart are the ways of them some people want to have strength in themselves but this is saying blessed is the man whose strength is in thee <coughs> excuse me in whose heart are the ways of them and so we are blessed when we allow the Lord to be our strength this is about Jehovah Sabaoth of course we're blessed we're just one person but if we have multiple heavenly host fighting on our behalf of course we're blessed and the and even one host is an extremely large number but we have multiple host of angels of course we're blessed and then verse 6 who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well the rain also filleth the pools so Baca was a place um, of weeping and so um, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well the rain also filleth the pools so even in a place of weep, of weeping the Lord will meet us there so it doesn't matter what the circumstances may be in our lives the promises of the covenant will still manifest for us we are people we're going to have experience normal experiences in life but there's a verse in the Bible that says what the devil meant for bad, God meant it for good. So hold on to God even when things don't seem right, don't seem like they're going well. If your trust is in God, God can take that very situation and turn it around for your good. Verse 7, they go down from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. This this is a key also. Think about, um, and I often use this um, analogy because in my mind it's powerful. The older people, how as they grew older, somehow they seemed to go from strength to strength. They didn't seem to get diminished. They seemed to grow even stronger. And that's people that were holding on to God. They knew him in their soul. God will make us. The Bible says he takes us from glory to glory. We, we as children of God, see the promises are things you have to grab hold of. If you never grab hold of, it won't manifest for you. But he's telling you, we don't have to grow old like the world. We can grow and get better with age. Through the promises of God, if we hold on to it, he'll take us from glory to glory, from strength to strength. Hold on to him and believe him for his promises. And then um, verse 8, O Lord, God of hosts, and here he says it, O Lord, God of hosts. This is translated from Jehovah Sabaoth. Hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. He's saying, listen to me. L listen to my prayers. Um, so, God does. We know that he does. Listen to our prayers. Verse 9. Behold, O God, our shield. And look upon the face of thine anointed. We want to be face to face with God. 
We want him to surround us as as a shield. Verse 10, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. The tents of wickedness, they, you know, they just don't know what is down the road. It's like living wicked lives, according to the Bible, it's almost like you're walking around with um, with a time bomb attached to you. It's only a matter of time before the time bomb goes off. So they can enjoy their lives and enjoy whatever they're doing. But when that time, when the time arrives, it was all for naught to live that way. And the reward of the wicked will be explosive. And then, um, let's see. Verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. Think about what he's telling us. Think about a sun. Think about a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. These things are wonderful to have, grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. That's telling us the Lord's will for our lives. Some Christians believe that God wants us to be living impoverished, living um, lives where some people even believe that God will make them sick and it is um, you know that that through it it's strength and he doesn't want us to be that's not his best that's not his best this is telling us no good thing will will he withhold from them that walk uprightly we can get sick because we are in human bodies but that's not anything that God did to us. That's something that we're supposed to believe and at, seek God for healing and deliverance. Verse 12, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. And the, the psalmist wanted us to remember that. That's his final point. Blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. We trust that the Lord will fight our battles. We don't have to try to fight. We don't even have to get upset. Give it to God, rest and trust in Him, knowing that He will fight on our behalf. Jehovah Sabaoth. And so I want to wrap up with that and then we can go on to our discussion, to the discussions. Heavenly Father, we thank you for time to spend with you again. We bless your holy name, Lord. Show us who you are, Jehovah Shaboeth. Sabaoth. Help us to understand your names and to understand and get to know you even in a greater way. Reveal yourself to us. Help us to understand Jehovah Sabaoth. We love you. We honor you. We trust you. We need you. We love you. We walk in your covenant promises. I ask that the Lord will bless us, keep us, make his face shine upon us, lift up his countenance upon us, be gracious to us, and give us peace. And all that agree with the prayer can say, Amen. Amen. Amen.